it's clear that Weird has taken off. I don't know who said it first. Uh, I personally heard Tim Waltz use the term first, but I mean, it just stuck. It caught on and now everybody's calling Republicans weird. And now we have this ad that dropped. Uh, I'm not sure who's responsible for it. I know it's not the Harris campaign, but it's an it's a pack associated with the Democratic Party. And this ad, this is something else. Um, l- let's just <laughs> let's watch it, because I think that this honestly is like the perfect representation of this current iteration of the Republican Party. Us MAGA Republicans banned abortion, but that's just the start. That's just the start. If Trump gets elected, we want the government involved in all aspects of your sex life. Way more involved. Way more involved. When you have sexual intercourse, it should be illegal to use contraception. No pills, no condoms. Your genitals are reserved for procreation. If you freeze 12 eggs, you should be required to have 12 babies. Okay, this is... (laughs) This is so good, it's making me feel uncomfortable. Like, this is this is a damn good ad. I mean, he's sweating. Just, th- like, this is what comes to mind for normal people when you hear about some of the shit that Republicans believe in, right? When you hear about people who are concerned about the fertility of other individuals, whether or not they have kids, what they do in the privacy of their bedrooms. Like, this is the motherfucker that you imagine. So they're caricaturing Republicans in the perfect way. Uh, this is very, very good. Uh, let me go back a little bit since I paused it to talk over it, but... uh. 12 eggs, you should be required to have 12 babies or else you're a serial killer. And I'm definitely not a serial killer. Are you? (laughs) My son monitors my porn usage to make sure I'm not self-pleasuring. Just like Speaker of the House Mike Johnson. That's true, you can look it up. Don't you think that's normal? Yeah, I do. It's normal for your son to do that. You should have a family member monitor your porn use too. Because pleasuring yourself is very, very naughty. I'm voting in November. I'm voting in November. We're all voting in November, are you? Because what happens in your bedroom is up to me. Is up to me and my son. Also, mouth stuff is a sin. God damn, that is a brutal attack ad. Brutal attack ad. Uh, I mean, it encapsulates everything wrong with the Republican Party right now. They are creepy, weird losers, and they are hyper fixated on what everybody else does. So I think that that ad, that that ad slaps. You play this in swing states. I mean, 50 state landslide. No, I'm just kidding. No, but it's it's a really good ad. Um, but what's what's so weird to me, and I said this on Twitter, is that, you know, for years now, uh, you know, we've, we've been trying so hard to counter Republican stupidity uh, with facts and logic and reason. You know, you've seen my videos. I take time to correct the record and fact check. All of that was just not getting through. Like we were we were yelling at a, a fucking brick wall. All we have to do is call these motherfuckers weird. How crazy is that? Call them weird, and they immediately start foaming at the mouth and shitting their pants. Who knew that it was that easy? All it took was for one Democrat, Tim Waltz, to say, these motherfuckers are weird. And everybody's just like, yeah, they're really weird. And now the response to them being called weird is even more insane because it didn't just stick. Like, the way that they're reacting, it's it's proving... <laughs> how weird they are. And here's the thing about that attack. I said this in the video, so I don't want to over repeat myself, but it's it's non falsifiable, because you never want to be defending yourself as not weird. Um, So if you're already having to do that, you've lost, right? The best thing to do, ignore it. But they can't, because Republicans have yearned to always be like, part of the cultural in crowd. They're always you know, trying to get celebrities to support their causes, which is why they latch on to any washed up celebrity that they can find that, you know, signals support for them. Um, So this to them is like the worst thing ever because they've always wanted to be accepted. They've always wanted to be at the top of the social hierarchy. And they are in some ways, right? I mean, if you're a Republican, you know, odds are you're you're a straight white person. So you're doing okay. But they always wanted to be Uh, cool with the liberals who they loathe and part of it is like since they can't be part of that club then they hate liberals i mean i mean think about these people ben shapiro dude wanted to be a hollywood writer he failed at that and now he hates liberals he made it his life mission to uh you know destroy liberals jd vance i don't know how true this is but there's rumors that and, and i believe this is according to his roommate that he was basically pretty lived up until 
the reviews came out for Hillbilly Elegy, and then he's like, oh my god, fuck these liberals, I've got to destroy liberals, this is it for me. Uh, you know, the liberal elites, the uh, movie critics rejected my shitty uh, book turn movie, and uh, this is it, that's the last straw. So it's crazy that they want to be accepted so bad, and just like shining a light on how weird they are, it's, it's just... I didn't know it was kryptonite for Republicans. Now, I do want to get to some of their defenses. So you have Matt Walsh here. I don't know why they're posting like hour long clips to uh, to Twitter. But so he talks about weird Democrats, because one of the things that I've seen from Republicans in response to the weird accusation is them just saying, no, you you're weird, which that's not going to resonate. Um, but let's let's hear a little bit. I have some Matt Walsh and then I have some Ben Shapiro. You're in for a treat, Matt Walsh and Ben Shapiro. Uh, so here he is responding to the weird allegations. I haven't pre-watched any of this, by the way. So if he says something super sussy or ridiculous, then just keep in mind you've been warned. Points and pay focus groups a lot of money to test them is that it's effective to repeat things over and over and over again. Even when people True. know they're being fed a manufactured soundbite, and even if people know it's a lie, it can still work to some extent at a subconscious level. He's saying this from experience. If Republicans repeat the same thing over and over and over again, even if it's not true, they can still get people to think it. I have multiple examples open borders. All of a sudden, Republicans in unison scream open borders, and now it's just accepted that the borders are open when, no, the borders aren't open. That's fucking stupid. Uh, the next thing, uh, you know, genital mutilation, chemical castration when it trumps, comes to trans kids. When what we're talking about with regard to gender from a care, most of the time is just a change of uh, pronouns, different clothing, maybe a different name until they're older, and then... You know, if a doctor and a parent agrees to it, then, you know, they can get HRT, perhaps puberty blockers. But they've just gotten on this, oh, my God, general mutilation, general mutilation that everybody just thinks, oh, so kids are getting sex changes. You know, if you care about genital mutilation, you would think that these same people would protest, you know, um, circumcision. But it's just it's about creating a narrative. So when he says this, he's speaking from experience. He is a paid propagandist for Republicans. So he knows what works. And he's seeing in real time. That strategy that Republicans have used now come back to bite them in the ass because Democrats are all saying that Republicans are weird and it's absolutely landing, which is why they're shitting themselves. Advertising slogans work on the same principle. If you constantly bombard people with the same message, the same slogan over and over and over again, eventually they will, uh, against their will, internalize it. But talking points can backfire, especially when politicians go off script. They uh, can get themselves into a lot of trouble very quickly. And we're starting to see that right now with a soundbite you've now heard a million times in which we discussed yesterday, which is the refrain that J.D. Vance and uh, the other Republicans are weird. Every Democrat and media outlet has clearly been instructed to repeat this attack endlessly for the past week. OK, I don't think it's correct to say that media outlets are being instructed to repeat this attack. It's not like Fox News where they get talking points with some particular stories, right? Uh, where they call it, you know, Biden's border crisis or some shit like that. I, I think that with regard to this phenomenon that we're seeing, everybody's talking about weird because Democrats are driving a narrative. They're creating a narrative for the first time in a very long time. When was the last time you can remember Democrats actually creating a narrative and not just like responding to one that Republicans have uh, trumped up, right? This is the first time in a long time. So the media is reacting to Democrats creating a narrative. It's not like they're taking talking points from them. I mean, maybe it's true to an extent with MSNBC, right? Because that's essentially the PR wing of the Democratic Party. But news outlets in general, they're just reporting what's happening. And what's happening right now is a lot of Democrats are all calling Republicans really fucking weird losers. So that's why they're reporting on it. In an interview the other day, it was West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin's turn to repeat this line. But he didn't just repeat it. He also attempted to explain what it means to be weird. And nothing he said made any sense, which suggests that Democrats don't really understand the talking point that they've been handed, yet they're repeating it anyway, of course. Watch. Wait, what? Even Matt Walsh tweeted about how it's a good attack because it's visceral. And now he's like, oh, no, they don't understand the talking point. What do you mean you don't understand the talking point? The talking point is that you guys are fucking weird. Like this guy right here has talked about the fertility of young girls. That is weird. That's not normal. He obsesses about the genitals of children. That is not 
normal. That is not normal. I'm sorry. So Joe Manchin, not the best example because he's not very bright. And I don't think that he's in these Democratic Party meetings where they're like, okay, everybody, let's call them weird all in unison. He's just jumping on the bandwagon because he wants to be part of the club. And he knows Democrats hate him. At least the Democratic Party's base hates him. Uh, but he is dumb, to be fair to Matt Walsh. I do agree with that. But let's listen. I haven't seen this clip yet. Well, that, that was a weird comment. That definitely is weird. And some of the different things and positions they've taken is, seems fairly weird to me. And weird means basically when you have... Rash- so I guess he's referring to the childless cat lady comment, I'm assuming. ...supposedly very educated, rational people. The same things that just are so far out of the mainstream. That, you know, I find I've heard everything as long as I've been around. But there are some things I haven't heard. And that's, that was very weird way of putting it what yeah i mean this thing here is just the name calling back and forth that goes on i mean you know and really the attacks is coming from former president trump and all them it just my god just say what you're for and say what you're against say what you're doing what you don't agree with and go from there he he's so cucked <laughs> even as he's just like yeah republicans are weird he's like we should stop with the name calling you know what joe manchin shut the fuck up okay Matt Walsh can roast you. I'm, I'm going to give him permission to roast you. I want to move on to Ben Shapiro because he talked about this. Now, this is a 52-minute long video. We absolutely will not be watching all of this. Uh, but we'll watch a little bit of it to see Ben Shapiro's defense of J.D. Vance. Now, I believe this is the episode of the Ben Shapiro show where he tries to tell everybody that J.D. Vance is uh, indeed not weird and very normal. Now, this isn't the best person to, to make the case for jd vance not being weird since ben shapiro is pretty weird like if, if if a bunch of people were saying that i'm weird and ben shapiro tried to defend me i'd be like ben let it let it go because if you say that i'm not weird people are just gonna think i'm more weird like this is the guy who said that wet p word is uh, not normal so he's a dry p word enjoyer so uh, this guy knows who's normal and who isn't uh and who's weird and who isn't so let's listen So over the last two days, according to Tom Elliott, founder of Gravian, CNN and MSNBC have suggested that J.D. Vance is weird more than 150 times in two days. (laughs) The Democratic media complex rides again. You know, they they are all in coordination. Posting their L's on Maine. Motherfucker, you have Fox News and all these other, uh, you know, right wing outlets. You have a a bajillion fucking right wing YouTubers all saying the same talking points. So this one time that the media happens to pick up on a narrative that Democrats spread all of a sudden, you're fucking pissed off. This is what you guys do all the time. So cope. You can sense the the joie de vie in the media the media articles. yeah yeah d- that's a good question star did his crew count the articles i don't know but like counting how many times they call jd vance weird is in and of itself a little bit weird overjoyed for for like three weeks there they had massive cognitive dissonance they hate donald trump they hate jd vance and so they were like oh my god but we still have to cover the fact that joe biden is senile what do we do what do we do so they forced joe biden out of the race and now they're back in their comfort place they're back to eating their comfort they're in the corner eating cartons of ice cream and making fun of J.D. Vance, like their favorite thing to do. So Chuck Schumer a bad hobby. goes on the Sunday shows and he labels J.D. Vance weird. Uh, the addition of J.D. Vance uh, to this ticket, it's it's incredibly uh, bad choice. Um, I think uh, Donald Trump, I know him, and he's probably sitting and watching the TV. And every day, uh, Vance, it comes out, Vance has done something more extreme, more weird, more erratic. Uh, Vance seems to be more erratic and more extreme than President Trump. And I'll bet President Trump is sitting there scratching his head and wondering, why did I pick this guy? I can't believe he's playing this clip. <laughs> we got Chuck Schumer clapping jd vance's cheeks like that that's embarrassing right he just got called weird by chuck schumer that's devastating that is devastating <laughs> look at ben shapiro <laughs> he's like i can't believe i have to defend this shit i can't believe this is the reality we're living in now Ah, oh, love it so much yeah so again the idea here is that he's weird jen Psaki who went directly from being the press secretary for Joe Biden to being the press secretary for Kamala Harris, but working for MSNBC. She also says that J.D. Vance is weird. Let's watch the clip. Go ahead. Kamala Harris, in so many ways, might just be the right candidate at the right time. (laughs) The right candidate for this century, by the way. His response... (laughs) His defense of J.D. Vance is just... 
Can you believe everybody's calling him weird? Look, this person called him weird. No, this person, <laughs> this person called him weird. Isn't this so fucked up? <laughs> they don't even know how to do propaganda anymore. Joe Biden dropping out totally rocked their fucking world in all the worst ways because they don't know what to do. They're, they're just like, can you believe this? Look at this clip and just see this more. Like, holy shit, this is amazing. Is he just going to go through the whole list of people calling J.D. Vance weird? Because I feel like if I'm J.D. Vance, you're failing to defend me here, man. <laughs> she might be the right candidate to tell the country that actually we don't have to go back. To tell the country that actually back wasn't so great for lots of Americans and that we can go forward instead. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you this is going to be easy. It is not. Donald Trump and his weirdo running mate and the Republican apparatus behind them will regroup. They will throw everything. It's going to be gross, misogynistic, sexist, racist, all of the things. So this is the candidacy they're going to try and run, is that if you point out that Kamala Harris is, in fact, both weird on policy and personally, this means that you're a racist and a sexist and the actual weirdo is the perfectly normal guy from Ohio who's married with kids and goes to Catholic church. Bro, I'm sorry. But they're not saying that Trump and the Republicans are racist against Kamala Harris because they're calling her weird. They're saying that they're racist because they're calling her a DEI candidate. Donald Trump is straight up now doing a trutherism about whether or not she's black. I mean, if if he just was like, no, you're weird, actually. No, -uh, I'm not weird. You are. That would be an improvement compared to the shit that they're saying. The House GOP leadership had to come out and say, can we stop with the racism and sexism? Because you're going to fucking up our chances. So he, he's he's trying so hard to turn this back on Democrats. But, I mean, if you've got to spin this, how the fuck would you spin this? If I were Ben Shapiro and I had to do propaganda for Republicans, I genuinely would not know how to spin this. Because first and foremost, I feel like J.D. Vance is just like demonstrably weird, especially given all the shit that he said about childless cat ladies. But I genuinely don't know what else I would say. Like, I, I think this is why it's important to just be objective and criticize Republicans and Democrats when you disagree with them. That's what I do. I don't have to spin shit, right? I, I talk shit. And if they say something that I like, then I agree with them. Um, it's just so crazy to me to watch him try to spin this and polish this turd when clearly it's not polishable. Church. Now that, that And believes in traditional family and thinks that it's actually kind of a big social issue if people aren't having kids. J.B. Pritzker. Yeah, the more you talk, the more weird he sounds, though. You understand that, right? Who is the ridiculous governor of Illinois, possible VP pick, apparently. He, too, was, was suggesting that Trump and Vance are weird. Let's play the clip, too. Go ahead. Just weird. I mean, they really are. The things that they stand for. Donald Trump, of course, is afraid of, of uh, windmills. And, you know, he talks about uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. He, you know, his running mate, as you probably have heard, is... Uh, he also, don't forget, he talked about Barney Frank's nipples and said they were very disrespectful. Like, don't forget that, okay? You know, getting known for his obsession with couches and uh, and somebody who is hiding his views on a woman's right to choose. Uh, and then uh, just broadly, the attack on people who are childless and saying that we had to raise taxes on childless people, calling them cat ladies. Uh, I think, you know, he apologized to cats, but uh, he uh, hasn't apologized to women. That's true. Okay, again, the idea here is it's all projection. It's all projection. Okay, how do we know it's projection? Because it's true that there is a weird position with regard to having children or not having children as a society. And there is a weird position with regard to traditional family versus alternative lifestyles. That weird position is that all of these things are morally equivalent. They are not, or that they are societally equivalent in terms of their benefit to society, because they're not. It turns out that all functioning societies are rooted in a traditional family structure that is built around having kids. That is utterly uncontroversial. If it's gonna, if it's controversial to you, then you probably should look at your priors. Every society Not is rooted in the little platoons represented by families. And those families have to be built for the future or the society doesn't have a future. We'll be okay. If people don't want to have kids, there's 8 billion of us on the planet. We're going to be okay. Calm down. Okay. Chill. Alternative perspectives, which is that pretty much all personal choice is not a matter of social impact or morality. That is a weird idea. It is a peculiarly Western educated okay, let's go a little bit and childbearing and child rearing explicitly rejects this. Okay, he's just trying France to is sort of be kind of snarky nonsense. The only thing that matters on an issue level is the fact that Kamala Harris actually identifies with one side of this particular political divide. And that does have major ramifications for the future of a society. 
And let's face it, that's what we would normally call weird. Weird just means. Okay, so he gets to the, you're weird. God, this is amazing. So, uh, yeah, there you have it. Uh, Republicans are not taking the uh, weird accusations um, very well. Uh, and they're kind of they're kind of proving the point for us, right? Amazing.